Hey there everyone, it's me, Madame Macabre, and I am back with another video. So for today's video, it's going to be another sort of real talk style video, slash rant, I don't know, it's it's more of a light-hearted real talk, but it's something I wanted to share my perspective on nonetheless. And as you've already put together from the title below, I am assuming you know that today we're going to be talking about my view on creepypasta OCs, namely the dreaded Mary Sue and shipping bait. Now, I can already feel you starting to pick up your pitchforks and get ready to witch hunt some children in their terribly written characters. However, I've come to you today to share possibly what could be an unpopular opinion, because at the end of the day, I don't really care about the existence of these things. They don't really bother me, and I'm going to share some reasons why they shouldn't bother you. Now, boy, oh boy, do I know that it is popular to hate on these poorly written characters. You see it everywhere. You see lots of rants. You see lots of really negative channels who are entirely created and founded just to attack people for their work. And you know, I've made fun of some poorly written characters before, not on a public platform, mind you, or to where the creator could see it, but there's been times where I've, I've seen characters and I've, I've gotten a chuckle out of it. However, there are some people who just take it to the whole new level and they just make it their business to just actively hate these OCs and rant about them on any platform they can and just, they single-handedly blame the creators of bad OCs for ruining fandoms. And there are some really bad OCs. Specifically in the creepypasta fandom, the worst perpetrators tend to be the the killer clones. You know the ones, they sort of carbon copy Jeff the Killer's setup, maybe alter a couple things, tweak a few things, but all in all, they're pretty much gender-bent carbon copies. Not always gender-bent, but they usually are strikingly similar to Jeff. They've got a similar MO, they just maybe have a different weapon, but they have the killer the strangler, the slasher, the whatever, you know what they're doing there essentially, rather than creating their own new creative backstory, creative character, they're just sort of taking a shortcut and then just kind of ripping straight from Jeff the Killer. Along with those, you have the self-insert for shipping purposes, I have seen a lot of those. The authors will usually deny that it's a self-insert, but come on now, let's, let's be honest here, just gonna say it now. Hun, please, you're not fooling anyone. It's a self-insert. And finally, another thing I've seen popping up a lot in creepypasta characters are god mode characters, where just the, the authors, these are generally more for, say, like, role-playing folks. They just make their characters obscenely powerful, and they have to, like, go on and on about the fact how, yeah, my character could beat Jeff, my character could beat this. They just like to pump up their own character and just make them ridiculously strong. And it, it gets on the nerves of role players because these are the kind of people that you can't really have a good role play with because they just, they're unreasonable. And then you have the umbrella term, Mary Sue, which generally combines all of the previous ones and you know how to spot them. Though I have seen this term thrown around where it doesn't belong, but true Mary Sues do exist. Oh boy. But the thing is, despite how annoying all these different character archetypes can be, who cares? I mean, I'm being really serious, you guys. Who cares? In what way does someone's terribly designed and written character affect you and your ability to enjoy the fandom? I mean, for God's sake, we have all made our own terrible, terrible Mary Sue, Gary Stu, whatever character when we were growing up and learning to express our creativity. Don't you lie, we have all had one. Mine was a Naruto character, not gonna lie. Not proud of it, but it happened. Creating god-awful, terrible characters is sort of a rite of passage for kids learning to grow up and express their creativity. And honestly, it's not a bad thing. I can already hear the voices crying, but madam, it ruins the community. How? See, here's the thing. Never once in all the years I have been in the creepypasta community has someone's terribly written character at all inhibited my ability to enjoy well-written scary stories. And again, I can hear you, no madam, you don't get it. The roleplay community. It ruins the roleplay community. Don't roleplay with them. But madam, I'm not even a roleplayer and I still think they ruin the community. 
It's supposed to be about stories, not self-insert characters. Okay, well, if you're going to look at it that way, then the blame doesn't just fall on poorly written characters. It falls on all fan-created characters, including well-written ones, which starts to leak into very gray territory because what if some characters came from really well-written stories that you like and they just sort of inspired other works and it, it, it gets pretty hairy. If you want to go down that rabbit hole, you're starting to say only certain people can create content. You can't create a visual design for it because that will spark on creation of characters and it's just it's natural progression in the community, and unfortunately there's not really anything that can be done about that. That being expressed, I personally don't think anything should be done about that. See, I'm one of the people who doesn't really care about the OC role-playing shipping. I don't really care for that. I'm in creepypasta for the scary stories. However, the reason I'm not upset about the characters moving in is because I understand that it did play a major role in the growth and development of this community. Some people will be quick to combat this, saying that yes it grew, but it grew in bad directions, it did this, it did that. However, the way I choose to look at it is originally, before all the OCs came and before the people who wanted to ship and do all this other stuff with the characters and pump all their creative force into it, the creepypasta community was a very small niche thing that wasn't very well known by many people. People thought you were talking about a strange dish when you said the word creepypasta. And you better believe finding people in the real outside world to talk about these things with was very difficult because, it, again, it was a niche thing. It wasn't well known by, I guess, more of the normal folk outside of the alternative community. Again, there, there will be some people who preferred the community being very small and closed off and private, and they are 100% entitled to feel that way. However, that's just different from my own outlook. If you couldn't tell, I kind of like horror a lot. It's both a part of my hobby and my lifestyle. It brings a lot of joy to my life, and I personally want it to grow and I want it to spread to more people that we can share it with. Personally, I'm happy that Creepypasta blew up as big as it did because that brought in a lot of new people into horror than had ever previously considered it. Yes, a lot of these are kids who still are a little bit squeamish around actual horror and they're sort of dipping their toes in the water with creating their little role-playing characters and all that, but nevertheless, it's opening a door. Who's to say when they get a little bit older, they might not take a risk on, you know, getting more into maybe some Stephen King, some Lovecraft, expanding and broadening their palettes. Every one of us horror fans had a moment in our lives that turned us onto horror, that opened the doors for us and got us truly interested in digging deeper. And for a lot of these kids, that's what Creepypasta and their OCs are doing for them. And honestly, in general, I have never been cool with gatekeeping culture, so I just, I would never, ever want to be the one that sees a kid come in, taking an interest in the community and wanting to create their own character, and see a little bit of a spark starting to grow with an interest for horror. I would not want to go in, stomp it out, tell them that their character's awful, and then boom, they lost their possible interest for horror and they'll never come back. That's just not how I operate. I welcome all new potential horror fans, young and old, anybody who's interested and wants to learn more. I wanna help them find their way. I don't wanna discourage them and make them feel unwelcome. They're just taking their baby steps after all. And I get it, there are some really bad designs out there and some really bad stories and it can be embarrassing when you're trying to explain creepypasta to somebody they Google it and the first thing that pops up is a bunch of really terribly designed OCs. But that being said, at the end of the day, they're not really hurting anybody. But you know what is hurting somebody? Harassing children over what could very well be their very first attempt at expressing themselves creatively. I mean, I'm lucky. My generation, when I was going through this phase, we didn't have the internet as this all-knowing, always hovering entity around us. All my embarrassing OCs, they were on physical notebook paper. I could tear them up and throw them away and no one will ever see them. However, 
all the kids who are young now, I mean, they're posting it on the internet. This is gonna be embarrassing to them for years to come. But again, it's normal and they're growing and they're learning and they're expressing themselves and that's healthy. Yes, a lot of them are so edgy and cringy, but that doesn't matter. They're going through a phase. We all did it. I keep reiterating this, but everybody has done this whether they want to admit it or not. Whatever fandom it was that you were particularly passionate about, whether you actually wrote down the character or not, I guarantee you, you had a character, a self-insert or a Mary Sue, in your head that you would fantasize about because all kids do this. It's part of creatively expressing yourself and learning and using your imagination. These kids are just unfortunate enough to be going through this cringy, edgy phase in the digital age, so it's out there for the whole world to see and make fun of. At the end of the day, my motto when dealing with these cringy, overpowered, perfect Mary Sues is don't tear them down, but teach them. If you're gonna go in with a mindset that you know so much more than them and you're such a better writer and you're so much more creative and you have such a better grasp on horror than them, good, use that. Be a mentor to them. Bring them into the community, show them how it's done. Offer to help them. Again, a lot of these people are young kids or the ones who aren't young kids are people who were perhaps scared to express themselves creatively their whole life and they are taking a plunge, trying something brand new. Instead of leaving a nasty comment telling them how much of a ripoff or a recolor their character is, why not try offering them some pointers on how to improve it? And yes, there will be some stinkers who don't want to hear any advice, they don't want to hear anything from you because they know everything. Again, it's another phase. However, a couple stinkers shouldn't ruin the entire batch of young'uns. And besides, the ones who are very headstrong about their character being the best are the ones who are gonna have it the hardest when they look back at their cringy, embarrassing, edgy phase in the future. And when you run into these stinkers who don't want any help from you, that's fine. Just walk on by, don't pay any mind to them in the future. Honestly, I swear, half of the cringy characters that are super well known now are only super well known because people made such a big stink about them. Honestly, if no one was talking about them, they would just be another bad character on someone's profile with only a couple of views. But I don't know, I'm rambling again. Anyways guys, this has been sort of my perspective on how I personally feel about OCs, bad Mary Sue characters and all that, and how they just don't really bother me all that much. Now that's not to say I like, yes I love these things, they're great, because honestly I will roll my eyes right out of my head at some of these super cringy, super edgy characters. Believe me, I'm right alongside you, I don't like seeing them, I just don't think their existence is a problem. Go ahead and leave your own opinions down in the comments below. And if you enjoyed this video, please leave a like. And if you would like to see more content like this on my personal channel, go ahead and subscribe. And if you want to get notified every time I upload new stuff so you don't miss anything, you can go ahead and hit the little bell thing wherever it is to join the notification squad to know as soon as stuff comes out. Anyway, I will catch you guys all next time. That's all for now. Bye bye